Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Kayla and it's time to crack into a good book. So I'm finally starting to film some of my favorites of 2019 videos. And obviously I figured I would start off with urban fantasy and paranormal romance since we all know I love these. I am like kind of incapable <laughs> of choosing a certain number of books for my favorites. So what I figured I would do for these videos is just walk you through all of my five, four and a half or five star reads from 2019 because again, I can't choose a particular favorite. <laughs> and I definitely would recommend all of these for sure. So out of the 318 books I read, 56 of these were four and a half or five stars. So three of them were like, I was listening to audiobook versions of books that I've already read. So I don't think I'm going to talk about those just for the sake of, you know, talking about books that I hadn't read previous to last year. So I've already talked about several of these series on my channel. So some of them won't come as much of a surprise to you probably, but the first four books that I'm going to talk about today is the, you know, the first four books of the Invisible Library series by Genevieve Kaufman. Now, I have not read the fifth book yet, but I do own it and I'm sure I'm going to love it, but my guess is I'll probably read it soon because the sixth book recently came out and, you know, I'm dying to read that. So the first book is The Invisible Library. The second book is The Masked City. Third book is The Burning Page. And then the fourth book is The Lost Plot. So generally, we'll just hold this one up. Generally, this series is like, I mean, I've talked about it before, but the overall pitch here is that we have this like library, which is a mysterious organization that collects unique written works from like alternative worlds. So we have different types of worlds. Like we have fae and dragons in this series. You see more of a presence of one or the other, depending on what type of world it is. So if it's a chaos infested world, you see a lot more fae, or if it's like a logic based world, you see a lot more dragons. So the fae and the dragons do not like each other. And that kind of causes a lot of problems throughout the series. Uh, in the series, we have alternative worlds, which is really cool. We have fun books that are written and like, you know, some of them you don't see in our world, but it's like, what if, you know, Shakespeare wrote this other play or, you know, things like that. Um, that's not necessarily a concrete example. I don't remember exactly what all the alternative works are. Uh, but yeah, this is a really great series. It's very enjoyable. Irene, the main character, is probably one of my, like, new favorite female characters. She's very intelligent. She's you know, kind of a badass, and I just love her so much. She is a librarian, so that's kind of a fun, you know, touch, I guess. But yeah, so if you're looking for books about books, <laughs> definitely check out this series for sure. The next chunk of books I'll talk about is uh, three books by Kelly Armstrong. So we have Otherworld Secrets, Otherworld Chills, and then Wolfsbane. So of, th of these three books, Wolfsbane is the only one that was actually published in 2019. But, you know, since I still read them in 2019, I thought I would talk about them. Uh, so Otherworld Secrets and Otherworld Chills are both short story anthologies. And I do suggest that you read the actual Otherworld series before getting into these because some of them, some of the stories take place after the main series and like you won't really connect with it unless you have already read the series and know who these people are. But you know, they're wonderful stories. I'm so glad to see some of my favorite people back and you know, I want to know about their life post a series. But so generally, the Otherworld series, there's like, there's 13 books. The main character in each book kind of varies depending on the book, I guess. So like the first two books follow a female werewolf, the second two follow a female witch. I don't remember exactly but uh, exactly what the other ones feature, but you know, we, we do see this female werewolf, Elena, a lot. And then we have like a, like demons or half demons. There's like a necromancer. It's a really fun series. I highly recommend it. I've talked about it on my channel before. Um, and then Wolf Spain, we follow the two, like the twins of this main, some of the main characters from the original series and they're at like this supernatural um, summer camp and they discover that things are very uh, slightly amiss and they're trying to figure out what's going on. Uh, the, I think this is supposed to be a duology and the second book comes out sometime this year. So I'm definitely going to pick that up. But yeah, so there's like a very brief overview of, of these series. I really love them. Highly recommend Kelly Armstrong, particularly this series. So the next two books that I'll talk about are Taken and Chosen by Benedict Jacka. So this, these are books three and four. I don't remember which, I think this is book three and this is book four, but I could be wrong about that. But this is a, an urban fantasy series I talked about before on my channel. And 
the main character Alex is a diviner so he can kind of see probabilities of various events and like in that manner predict the future almost. So these two books follow, I mean they're like I don't want to spoil too much but we're generally following Alex and his apprentice and then like some of Alex's dark past comes back to haunt him almost. But the front cover has like a little quote from Jim Butcher and you know, it's like, Harry Dresden would like Alex Ferris tremendously, and I do think that's true. Like, I think fans of the Dresden Files would very much like this series, uh, because, you know, speaking as, as one of these, these people, I definitely recommend this series. We do see different types of fun magic that you don't normally see. Like, I think there was, you know, like, luck magic, obviously this, like, divining magic. There's, like, health magic type things. I mean, that's, that's not specifically what it's called. But yeah, so I definitely recommend the series. I'm hoping that I will continue it this year. The next book that I'll talk about is Some Girls Bite by Chloe Neal, and this is the first in the Chicago Lane Vampire series. I, this is like, you know, I'm finally getting around to reading it. I did talk about this recently on my channel. It's, I think it was published quite a while ago, but basically the, and I've talked about this again, so, you know, I'll just give you the pitch here, where the main character, Merritt, is a graduate student and she's, like, attacked by vampires and basically uh, she's turned into a vampire against her will. After she's turned into a vampire, somebody is like kind of out to get her, so she has to discover what's going on and like kind of transition into her new life as a vampire. So I, I did kind of mention there's definitely like a chosen one trope here, but I was totally fine with it. I really liked Merit. I thought she was such a badass, and I definitely want to continue this series as well. The next book that I'll talk about is That Ain't Witchcraft by Shauna McGuire. So I think this is the eighth book in the Encrypted series, and generally, um, this series follows a family who have broken away from like the Covenant of St. George and what this Covenant group was was basically like monster hunters and then this particular family was like mm, why are we killing all these monsters you know we not all of them are necessarily bad so they essentially want to protect supernatural creatures so this kind of follows the same format as like the other world series where the different books have different or follow different main characters so Generally speaking, you know, it's like we follow, we get two books per sibling and then, you know, it starts to repeat, but there are three siblings in this family that we follow and uh, they all have different personalities and different strengths. Like the oldest sibling is a professional dancer, uh, the middle sibling kind of works as like a, a zoologist, I think, and then the youngest sibling, who's the main character in this book, kind of, I don't know, I'm not, she doesn't really have like a... I can't remember if she specifically has like a particular job, but she's worked at like a carnival before. She's worked at an amusement park. So it's a really fun series. I highly recommend this. This is definitely along with the October Day series. These are my favorite Sean and McGuire series for sure. You get like a whole bunch of, of fun supernatural creatures. You're, you know, trying to preserve them and, and I don't know. It's just, it's just great. <laughs> So the next book that I'll talk about is Sapphire Flames by Alona Andrews. So this is the fourth, I think, book in the Hidden Legacy series. And this is more of a paranormal romance, I would say. But basically in this world, and I've, I've talked about it before on my channel, but in this world we do have different families that have different powers. And there's a lot of like politics between the families. And So this is the start of, I think, a new trilogy where we're following the younger sister of the main character from the original trilogy. This particular family has like a private investigation firm. We're solving some mysteries and then obviously there's this whole magic system involved. And we do get a lot of like really interesting powers. Catalina, the main character in this book, kind of is a siren basically and her powers basically make people love her but this is really actually dangerous for her because they get like really obsessive and want to like own her basically <laughs> and so you know that makes it for a, an interesting situation for sure there's obviously romance in here and it's it's just fabulous the next book i'll talk about is storm of locust by rebecca roanhorse so this is the second book in the six world series so this is kind of like a post-apocalyptic sort of thing where the world was flooded so there's you know not as much livable land anymore and this takes place in the American Southwest, which is, you know, very exciting because I'm originally from the, the American Southwest. So I know a lot of the locations that are mentioned in this book. And I'm like, yes, I'm so happy to see them. The main character, Maggie, is a monster hunter, essentially. So we have like a lot of Navajo gods and myths that take place in these books or that are mentioned in these books. And this particular one, there's like a mysterious cult led by someone known as the White Locust. Maggie in this book is trying to track down the white locust and rescue her friend. It's a really fun 
urban fantasy series. I really like Maggie. She's, you know, just one of these badass female main characters. <laughs> and um, yeah, definitely, definitely recommend it. They also have a fabulous cover. So if you're in interested in cover buys, <laughs> like these are, these are quite nice. So the next book I'll talk about is The Afterlife of Holly Chase by Cynthia Hands. So this one was kind of like, you know, I don't know if it's necessarily fits in with urban fantasy, but it's like close enough that I just decided to include it. Um, but this is essentially like, I, I talked about it recently in my December end of the month wrap up, but it's essentially like a meta retelling of A Christmas Carol. So the main character Holly is a failed Scrooge and she plays like the ghost of Christmas past in this Christmas Carol or Scrooge project. This year they there's a, a new Scrooge that's picked and he is a boy that's like really attractive and around Holly's age and she's kind of into him so naturally that makes things a little challenging for her since her job is to like reform him. We generally just follow their story as the the various ghosts try to collect information on this this new Scrooge and figure out how best to have you know the, the Christmas Carol play out and uh, what's their best shot at redeeming him? So, you know, it's it was it was a really quick read. It was great for the holidays. I really, I mean, Holly is kind of you know not starts off as as being very full of herself, but experiences growth over time. So I definitely appreciated that. Um, and finally, the last of the books that I'll talk about in this particular video is Storm Curse by Patricia Briggs. So this is, I think, book 11 in the Mercy Thompson series. Generally, this, this series focuses on Mercy Thompson, who is a coyote shapeshifter, and she works as a mechanic, so that's kind of like a, you know, a fun job, but she, that generally follows her relationship with the local werewolf pack, and there's, you know, there's fake creatures, there's gods, there's, um, I don't know, all sorts of supernatural creatures, but I've loved this series for the longest time, and, you know, I, of course, of course, of course, I loved the latest installment. So in this particular, uh, like, obviously, I don't want to spoil too much of what's happened, but Mercy has essentially declared the area that she lives as, like, being a neutral ground, a place where, you know, humans and Fae can kind of deal with each other. <laughs> we do get a lot of politics with dealing with the Grey Lords, who are, like, these really powerful Fae. So Mercy is trying to protect her area and, like, all the citizens that live there and just, I don't know, generally be awesome. But yeah, so again, Mercy is a fantastic protagonist. I really like her. And, you know, these books are really fast-paced. I, yeah, I love all the, the various supernatural creatures that we get, the lore that we explore. There's definitely some romance, and I, I do like how things have progressed there. So if you're looking for an urban fantasy book that has some romance in it, and, you know, you want, like, shifters and other supernatural creatures, I would definitely suggest giving this, this series a shot. So those are all of my four and a half or five star reads for in the urban fantasy or paranormal romance genre. And... You know, obviously I highly recommend all of these. They're just so fantastic. And a lot of these have books coming out this year that obviously, you know, I need to pick up and read and I'm sure I'm gonna love them. So I'm very excited for that. Let me know in the comments if you have already read any of these books and think you might pick them up. I hope you're having an excellent day and are reading something awesome. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a big thumbs up as that would certainly help me out. But with that, I think I'm gonna wrap it up here and see you in the next one.